This video was brought to you by ADST, the Association for Diplomatic Studies and Training. Tragedy in Rangoon The North Korean assassination plot against the President of South Korea If you watched the recent Olympic Games, you witnessed historic cooperation between the North and South Korean teams. Just 35 years ago, the last time South Korea hosted the Olympics, North Korea did not participate. This was partially because, in 1983, the North Koreans tried to kill the president of South Korea at the time, Chun Doo Hwan, while he was visiting Myanmar. Today on the podcast, we will hear from U.S. diplomat Thomas Dunlap, who served as the political counselor from 1983 to 87 in South Korea. It was, uh, there was always a lot of tension uh, in uh, Korea. Yeah. Chun Doo Hwan was on one of his seldom trips. He didn't tra travel much outside of Korea, but he took a trip through Southeast Asia and included a stop in Rangoon. Wow. John was traveling with his entire, virtually his entire cabinet, his foreign minister, his defense minister with him. We were never quite sure of why afterwards. We looked at the list of people who were traveling, why so many of the seniors in his government were there. But uh, he had uh, you know, almost all of his most important ministers with him. And they were scheduled to ap appear at a ceremony where I guess some prayers would be chanted and Mm -hmm. uh, you do what you do if you're a Buddhist, and Chun was a Buddhist at a Buddhist shrine. And there were a lot of photographers there, and there were a lot of uh, protocol folks there, and Chun Doo Wan was a few minutes late. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody else had assembled, and we're standing on this platform, and Chun Doo Wan was about four blocks away in a car making his way toward the pagoda when two Claymore-type mines were detonated uh, that just swept the whole stage where these people were sitting mm -hmm. or standing, Clear. killing 11 uh, senior South Koreans, including the uh, foreign minister, who was a great personal friend of my ambassador. Right. And um, uh, uh, a whole handful, double handful of Burmese. I think there were 18 dead, 30 wounded, something like that. Mm -hmm. Chun, of course, was not among them. Sorry, the Burmese, within about 24 hours, had run to ground the assassination team and had captured two of its members and killed two of its members. There were four folks. And they were able to get from interrogations, these were badly wounded folks, but they were able to get out of them the details of how they landed. They came off a, uh, a North Korean freighter mm -hmm. uh, disguised as seamen, carrying their explosives and hand grenades and pistols to defend themselves or, or to commit suicide, cyanide tablets and so forth. Made their way to the pagoda where they were told to, had been trained as to, to the layout of the, the pagoda, very efficiently mm -hmm. put the explosives there. One of them was sitting actually inside the pagoda out of the range of the explosion, mm -hmm. waiting for the time, and he knew the time when the Car should arrive. And I think the Burmese chief of protocol came up in a big car, and he thought that was Chun. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, waited till three or four minutes and pushed the button. Uh, there was no doubt about who uh, initiated this. It was the North Korean intelligence services. The very first thing we did was try and be helpful in this sort of pragmatic sense. We sent two airplanes to Rangoon, yeah, one so of which had some uh, some security officers from our side to help with the investigation, help the Burmese government with the investigation. They arrived on the plane that was to take Chun Doo Wan back. We also flew a hospital plane there and medevac the defense minister and some others to the mm -hmm. hospital at Clark. Mm -hmm. um, we later learned uh, that when the plane landed uh, in Seoul on about uh, 3 or 4 o'clock on this Monday morning, Chun convened all the remaining members of his cabinet and the deputies who were going to take the places mm -hmm. of those who had died out at the airport for an emergency cabinet mm -hmm. meeting. And they were all trying to show off to Chun how uh, outraged they were and how macho they were, and they were all giving him ideas about what to do. We, we could send a bomber strike at Pyongyang and bomb the president's house. We could do this, we could do that, we could do that. And Chun apparently said just, just about four or five things at that thing. First of all, he said, I'm going to make all these decisions. Nobody should do anything. Mm -hmm. And in particular, you know, pointing to these guys who've been so mm -hmm. outspokenly, so uh, you guys are going to stand down until I tell you what to do, and I'm going to take my time. I'm going to get some sleep. I'm going to talk to some folks. Mm -hmm. Of course, they knew he would talk to the Americans. Because Washington gets very, very nervous, and people like me start getting phone calls, and Dixie starts getting phone calls. So one of the things you're trying to do is to, is to find out what's going on on the Korean side and make sure they're on the, the reservation, but also sort of calming the, the nervous Nellies back mm -hmm. in Washington that we don't think the... Um, you know, the world is coming to an end. Um, it was, I, I suppose it was one of the harder jobs we had after this event to convince them that Chun was as rational and as unbelligerent as he seemed mm -hmm. to be. 
because I think like you just reflected, and like I would have thought mm -hmm. too, be, how, how can a politician not, not do something? Yeah. Well, he didn't do anything, mm -hmm. actually. Chun was um, a very reserved and, and inward man. He uh, never took great many people into his confidence. He wasn't a backslapper. He wasn't a very congenial or convivial mm -hmm. partner. Like we had a letter from Reagan for him. And uh, we had already, um, one of the things you asked what I did, I, I was always the, the fixer in these kinds of things. I tried to get it, and did, get the news over to the foreign ministry that our ambassador would like to deliver a personal letter, letter of uh, condolences and sympathy and support. And so we had already arranged a meeting for uh, about 2 o'clock that afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, Dixie went over, as always, alone. Um, Chun Doo Wan uh, did not want other Americans uh, in his meetings with the American ambassador, particularly other Americans who spoke Korean. Mm -hmm. um, he came back saying it was uh, absolutely astounding uh, that Chun was as calm uh, and rational and undistressed. I mean, he was clearly, uh, uh, you know, f fatigued to an extreme degree and very weary. But uh, Dixie saw no sign of um, sort of mental stress or anything that would affect his judgment. Mm -hmm. um, but he made right decisions in some important times, and this was one of them. To view more content on the history of American diplomacy, visit our website at www.adst.org.